So my name is Andreas and, uh, and I work at uh, Spring here in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm Eric Cho and I met Andreas 2009 in Stockholm University when we work in the same project. Through Snowbridge we, we are taking the Swedish experience over to Taiwan and try to combine that with with some new interesting technology. So we call it snow bridge and on the bridge of course you can travel in both directions and so we started out by bringing a lot of Taiwan competence here to Sweden and now we are doing an attempt to go in the other direction. We found Chrome Away three years ago and we were attracted by the ease of applications, the ease of building working blockchain applications quickly. And since then we have explored it through various prototypes and also run some education initiatives both in Sweden and in Taiwan. And now we, we have commercial products running on the platform. In technical perspective, we actually evaluate two or three different kind of blockchain technology before we start work with uh, Chroma Way. And uh, but uh, for the enterprise applications, in our previous um, um, experience in, in, in application development, we found that the da database is very important for the traditional applications. So, uh, especially for engineer, they have the know-how, they have the domain know-how, but they don't know uh, blockchain. So, use Chroma Waste technology is very easy for them to kind of uh, transform their previous application to the blockchain application. So, this could, could bring this uh, project very fast and uh, time to market. So, in our previous projects, we could even build up a, a, a production application in just three to four months. In Taiwan, um, about three or four years ago, it's uh, similar like the other countries. The cyber currency is the main motivation to the people who start the, the, the blockchain applications. Um, they also have several uh, companies who want to issue their own coins. Uh, it's very significantly changed in the, in the past two years. There are more, more and more uh, enterprise solutions, especially in the, in the uh, financial sector. For example, documentation, certification, or something um, like this uh, food chain, supply chain. So I think now the landscape is a little bit switched. Could be 70% is in enterprise application, only 30% talk about is uh, coins and uh, cyber currency market. Yeah. I think the culture is different from um, Taiwan comparing to the European countries. The people still um, a kind of um, lack to hold, I mean enterprise, to control their own data but not sharing the data to the others. So, so that's a quite different. So for blockchain, we need to promote this consortium concepts to have a different entity to share and to, in, to, to use the data at the same time. And the, this kind of a cultural barrier need to be uh, broken and then the blockchain could be used uh, um, in the very fantastic uh, uh, application. So given that train of thought, I guess it is also a good fit with the Chrome Away solution where you can, where you have flexibility as to whether it is a private or a public blockchain. So those are features that we are very interested in. There is some regulations say that the, the, the citizenship the data should be held by the government. But if uh, this um, node or, or this um, blockchain um, administration is only by the government, it looks like not so idea to the blockchain data sharing uh, concept. So uh, we need to uh, break this kind of bind, uh, boundary about the data uh, management and uh, try to more successfully to use the concept of blockchain. I think that is kind of technology and the regulation and also the administration's uh, concept need to be changed. When running pilots, uh, one of the most important things is to, as quickly as possible, get the end user engaged. And we've done enough pilots to not try to guess whether the pilot will be successful or not, because there's always the, the edge cases that become big hits. So you never know. 
So that is why we want, we want to put the technology in the hands of the potential users as quickly as possible. And that's, that's, the, that's the, end, the goal of the pilots. I think we, we start from the need in the markets and then we buy in some experience from uh, overseas. Like in Sweden, the land material project is very famous. So we could learn from that and try to uh, evaluate whether this is suitable to our market or not. So of course, this is the, at the beginning, we cannot guarantee this will be successful. But through the feasibility survey and uh, projects, we make some research on that and the co-work with our customer, then the customer will uh, try to get, get back their feedback and uh, what they think this need, be, need to be adjusted, so this need to be modified and become a customized domain market need. Then we could uh, make sure this is uh, more likely successful in the future. When you have a critical mass of, of, uh, of users, for an electronic identification, it is then more attractive to build digital services requiring an ID identified user. And, and since we quickly had the, 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 bank, the established bank ID, a lot of service providers started to, to build uh, digital services uh, behind the identification. So I guess that is how Sweden got a head start in this kind of digital services. In Taiwan, we don't have this kind of mobile um, identification uh, on our fo uh, mobile phone or the other mobile devices. We only have a chip car based uh, identification. So um, when we try to introduce the Swedish fintech technology to Taiwan, the first application we think is Bank ID because Bank ID is kind of infra infrastructure for the fintech. So, however, in Taiwan, just like Andrea said, it's different uh, from um, Sweden. We don't have such a consortium culture. So there's no uh, kind of cooperation between banks to establish a single company to issue this Bank ID. So we think about, since the blockchain is a kind of decentralized technology, so we could use blockchain to replace this centralized company, like the Bank ID in, in, in Sweden, this centralized company. So we start to design to use blockchain to issue this ID on a mobile phone. And then uh, we achieved that and we launched the service with our partner uh, in um, June this year. So we call it ESID. And uh, that is a quite fantastic project because we developed that about seven or eight months and we could launch it. And uh, it could be issued at the same function, quite similar function like Ben ID in Sweden, but it's based on the blockchain, Chroma OS blockchain. Thinking about uh, blockchain, I guess the first thought in people's heads are perhaps currencies. But then maybe the second thought in at least blockchain enthusiasts heads are connected to identification and blockchain. And there is the notion of self-sovereign ID, that you can yourself define your digital identity, uh, is, is something that, that we look into very closely when building Yes ID. And we will experiment with how the holder of the ID can attach additional information sources such as uh, medical records to their, to their identification. One way that we are using blockchain to create uh, commonly trusted data is together with the customer in the security space. Uh, we're building a product called the Blockchain Witness. Which is, uh, which is an application that, that can uh, freeze data in time and space and then make it easy to go back and see exactly what the data source looked like. And this can be used uh, for private persons documenting something on social media. It can be used uh, in legal cases following up uh, when, when, when data is used uh, as evidence. There are two versions, one is for the personal use and another one is for the enterprise. And there's also a version is for this notary service. That means uh, um, when you have something you want to bring to the court, normally you have to be stamped by the notary service uh, agents. 
but now they could use an application to just directly to, to capture the screen or the website, something, arguments, and they could be put on the blockchain. So they don't need to stand up thousands of the pages on paper, but they could just uh, directly to uh, collect the data and uh, to bring it to the court. So one pilot we're running now in Taiwan is for the Taiwan Land Registry, inspired by Chromaway's previous projects with the Swedish Lantmäteriet. Uh, we've conducted a pre-study during 2019 and aim to go into an implementation project uh, 2020. I guess there are some main differences between the, the Taiwan uh, situation and the Swedish one. Uh, the pre-study has uh, identified uh, the need for increased digitalization in some other government agencies, so it will take some time before that is in place. But uh, otherwise, we, th we, we think it's a, it's a perfect land ownership. It's something very suitable for, for blockchain mm -hmm. applications. Yep. It's, a, it's our honor to, to be invited to join this uh, pre-study lead by a uh, university in Taiwan, Fengjia University. They got this uh, research project in this year to help the land uh, registry uh, bureau in Taiwan to understand how blockchain could benefit to uh, make the land um, registration uh, digitalized. So in Taiwan, we haven't have a very complete uh, digitalization system for the land trading and the registration. So the government think about if we are, we are going to digitalize that, we should use uh, advanced technology, but not a uh, technology already exists or behind. So it, it is a very good research project, and uh, it starts from this March, and the web is uh, already about to submit uh, the, the report uh, just uh, in these two weeks. Um, uh, and uh, the whole project, uh, we expect that could be, be uh, start to have a, a small uh, pilot maybe next year and uh, start to uh, develop for the, the real pro uh, system uh, start from 2021. This is a very fantastic uh, opportunity. Uh, we, we have the honor to join. It's a, basically the land materials project is so famous in the world. And uh, also, um, we, we think this relational database could be very easily to link to the current uh, data. So it uh, will be much easier for us to shift uh, from the legacy system to a future advanced system. I guess one big difference between Taiwan and Sweden is that when Lantmetit in Sweden did the project, they had the, the, the ambition to do a proof of concept, whereas the, uh, the Taiwan government, they have the intention of building and implementing the system. Yes. Yes. Uh, they are not happy with a proof of concept. They yeah. want to implement it. So from, from day one of the project, the intention is to go to implementation From our previous projects, we know domain know-how is very important to make a successful application because uh, the application is uh, uh, connected to the customer. So the application is not uh, only use blockchain. The main purpose is to provide service to the customer. Most of the application has been uh, deeply stick with the domain know-how and the developer, the engineer, they have already used the traditional or legacy uh, technology to develop the application. So how to transform from the legacy application to the advanced blockchain application is very difficult if you need to learn a new develop development um, technique or you need a new programming skill. So there is a legacy system has been working Okay, although they are not on the blockchain, now we are going to kind of uplift it to blockchain and uh, using Chroma Ways technology with the relational database, it's very easy for the developer to understand how to program or to just make a very uh, minimal 
uh, modification on their legacy application, then they could connect the system with the new blockchain protocol. So that is uh, why we, we would choose like a Chroma way in this um, as a base of the application. When evaluating uh, blockchain platforms uh, to work with, uh, we were attracted by Chroma Way's uh, ease of use and the direct connection with, with database technologies and uh, the amount of programmers that are uh, competent database, uh, uh, database developers, how they could instantly be put to good use in building blockchain applications. For me, I think when I choose a blockchain technology, I look into three things. The first one is that this technology is mature or not. Because uh, blockchain is a new technology, and no one knows um, whether this technology. I mean, blockchain is a trend, but the core of this uh, blockchain platform will that sustain for a long time. So if this uh, technology uses lots of matured uh, technology inside, then I could kind of know, OK, this has been uh, exists for so long time. So in the future, it could sustain. The second one is that it should be very easy to program because as I said, we cannot wait to uplift from the, the legacy system to a uh, blockchain system for five years. If I could do it, I want to just block to, 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 to make it happen uh, in, in five, five months or six months. So the engineer must be, uh, uh, for them, they need to know how to use it very quickly. And the third is, as I said, the, the domain know-how need to be easily to transform to the new application. So it should be kind of a connection to the legacy system. It cannot be a kind of an isolated system. So that means you need to have connectability to the old system, like a relational database or the other uh, current existing technology. So if you're interested in building applications on the Chrome Away blockchain technology platform, Spring is more than happy to, to talk to you and help you driving your concept forward. And of course, if you're based in Asia. Yeah, come to Snowbridge. And uh, we also develop a uh, post-chain um, training material. So if you're interested in, you could use our platform to understand how to program um, Chrome Always post-chain.